Muhammad, peace be upon his soul. The greatest of prophets, Islam was his only goal. Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. From among all the prophets, Muhammad was the last. As his was a mission of the greatest task. There was only moral degeneration. People clung to idol adoration. For only to. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala abdihi wa rasulihi al-amin. Nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said that the best generation is my generation and those who follow them and those who follow them. The scholars looked at this hadith and they understood from it that there are three best generations ever humanity had seen. The best generation is the generation of the Prophet ﷺ and his companions. And then those who followed them, the generation of At-Tabi'een. And the last generation is the generation of Tabi'i At-Tabi'een, those who saw, those who followed the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. Therefore, it is essential if we would like to understand Islam properly, if we would like to live a happy life, if we would like to reach the paradise that Allah had made for us, it is essential that we study the biography, the seerah, the stories of the men who revolved the Prophet who were with the Prophet and who supported the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam. They are the best generation ever to walk the earth. And it was not because of their strength and might. It was not because of their wealth. It was not because of their beauty and the way they were built. It was not even because of their lineage or the tribes they descended from. It was because they were the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam. They were the safety valve that preserved this religion. They had their full devotion and loyalty to Allah the Almighty, to the religion of Islam, and to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam. They gave their lives. They immigrated, left everything behind for the sake of Allah the Almighty. They gave their lives to the cause of Islam, to protect Islam so that we can enjoy this beautiful religion safely in our homes, among our families, without being forced to migrate or to abandon any of the luxuries we are enjoying today. These beloved companions of the Prophet ﷺ, they were the ones who preserved Islam and gave this beautiful religion to us. And that is why studying their biography, knowing them is essential. Imagine if a person of us nowadays, any Muslim, goes to paradise and enters paradise if Allah is willing, if we take a look at those inhabiting paradise, most likely we would not recognize a lot of them, if any. But if one, may Allah forbid, enters hell, we will have a lot and a lot of acquaintances. We would recognize the majority in hell, which means that our life is not in accordance to the Qur'an nor to the Sunnah. Among 
the best generation among this beautiful generation of the companions, there stand a number of companions. Of course, the best of them all are the ten who the Prophet ﷺ gave the glad tidings to that they will be in paradise. And these ten are the closest companions to the Prophet ﷺ. And the best of these ten are four. And they are known as al khulafa al rashidun the rightly guided caliphs. And they are Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and Ali. May Allah be pleased with them. And the best of them, without any doubt, is Abu Bakr as siddiq May Allah be pleased with him. And he will be the focal point that we will try to not study his biography because this would require a lot of dedication and time to go through the life of the greatest man in Islam after the Prophet ﷺ. And this is something we could not afford. But we will take a few glimpses of his beautiful life. This companion of the Prophet ﷺ, who the Prophet himself ﷺ, had great love and respect for. His name was Abu Bakr Siddiq. This is how people knew him. Abu Bakr, meaning the father of Bakr. But his real name was Abdullah. And his father's name was Abu Quhafa. Yet his real name was Uthman. So he was Abu Bakr ibn Abi Quhafa. And it was said that his title was Atiq, which has two meanings. One meaning is old, and that is why we say Al Baytul Atiq when we refer to Kaaba, which means the old or the ancient house of Allah. The other meaning is freed from slavery. So if you have a slave and you free him, he becomes Atiq. And some scholars say that he was called Atiq because he was handsome. Others say that because he was, since the beginning of time, a generous person giving money into means of charity without thinking twice. Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, was born after the year of the elephant by two years plus, two years and six months. What is the year of the elephant? This has nothing to do with the Chinese calendar where they have mouses and monkeys and so on. At the time of the early Arabs, they used to commemorate certain dates with events. So they relate them together. And the year of the elephant is when the ruler of Yemen came to conquer Mecca because he was instructed by the Persians, by the head of the Persian Empire, to demolish the Kaaba. And this had its roots. It was said that they built a synagogue or a temple or a place of worship so that they would draw the Arabs into worshiping it instead of going to Mecca to worship Allah. And once they finished this beautiful monument and this beautiful building, a Bedouin came and he was outraged by this so-called blasphemy, act of blasphemy to them. Though they were pagans, they held great respect to the house of Allah, to the Kaaba. And when they saw this imitation, this mutilation, they decided that it was time for them to do something about it. And this Arab went in and he did what he had to do. Was it right? Was it wrong? What did he do? Well, he did something that made 
the brains flip of the Persians and of the people of Yemen. And this is what we will discuss, inshallah, after the break. So stay tuned. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So when the Arabs heard of this monument or this house of worship that was built to compete with the Kaaba, one of them was outraged and he did an evil act. He went at night to that house of worship and he put dirt and filth all over the walls and he left. And when they woke up and saw this, they knew that it was done by the Arabs. So they got their army ready. They got their elephants, which were creatures that the Arabs had never encountered before in their lives. And they marched to demolish and destroy the Kaaba. They took some sheep and camel, cattle of Abdul Muttalib, the grandfather of the Prophet والسلام, who was the head of the Qurayshis at the time. And he went to the ruler of, or to the leader of this army to ask him to give him back his cattle. And the man was astonished. He said that, I am here to destroy your house of worship and you're here to negotiate with me that I return to you your sheep and camels? What kind of a people are you? And the man said, in complete faith and trust in Allah, he said, I am the Lord of these animals. That's why I look after them. But the house of Allah has its Lord and he will look after it. And the story goes on as we know. And as it was documented in the Holy Quran in Surah Al-Fil, where Allah Azza wa Jal sent birds with stones, killing every single one of them. And the elephant could not proceed, not one step forward. And Allah protected his house. In that year, our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born. And two years and a half afterwards, his beloved companion, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq was born. And as you recall, he was known to be Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, though al-Siddiq is not his family name. It is a title. And this title is either given due to an action or a tribe or some characteristic in a person. So, for example, we know Abu Musa al-Ash'ari. May Allah be pleased with him. So we know he is from the tribe of Al-Ash'ira. And we know that, for example, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, this is not a tribe, but this is due to the fact that he used to believe whatever the Prophet told him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So al-Sadiq is a person who tells the truth. And if you believe someone and you believe him a lot, you become a Siddiq. And this is a status that a Muslim is given when he is a true believer. And that is why Allah described those in paradise to be the prophets, a Siddiqeen, those who believe entirely of what Allah and the Prophet tells us. 